In today's video, I'm going to look at two CD players that won't necessarily be repaired, but we're going to diagnose them in here, and I'm going to show you some of the pitfalls of dealing with some the so-called reputable shops, but well, we'll see. It really wasn't that reputable. Let's take a look at this. This is a Marantz CC4300 five disc CD changer that apparently is not working. Let's check it out. Got the unit hooked up. We'll turn on the power and see whether it, whether it does anything. Oh. That doesn't sound good. Sounds like we may have a mechanical problem. Tell you guys I had an interesting job earlier today. I'll tell you about. I was uh, called to work on a Hammond B3000 electronic organ. That's the all electronic version of the B3. So no tone wheel. It's all electronically generated. I didn't do a video of it. I probably should have. But I serviced this at a client's house, and there wasn't a lot of room in his music room. So uh, I barely had enough room to uh, get in there and actually do the service on it. Never mind trying to set up tripods and there was no lighting in there. I was working under a flashlight. And, but that was a fun one. Took me uh, all of about five minutes. Once we got a manual, I had to get a service manual for it, but found that the negative 24 volt rail was dead, no power. And uh, looked on the service manual and found there was a one microfarad 35 volt tantalum capacitor across the output of the regulator. So put the meter across that and you guessed it, we shorted. Clipped out the cap, put a new one in, electrolytic, in place of it, fired it up. The uh, owner was uh, thrilled when he had music coming out of his old B3000. Played me smoke on the water <laughs> to test it out. Had the old Leslie speaker and everything going on. Those things are just cool. You know, the B3 is uh, is cooler though, because of course it's all mechanical, right? It's got the tone wheel and everything, so they're they're kind of a cool unit. And he's got one of those too, so I might be servicing that for him at some point, and maybe we'll film that one. Okay, put this thing back on. I want to see. That is really noisy, isn't it? That's this motor down here that's making all that racket. But it does seem to be turning the disc tray. It's just noisy. It sounds like a bad motor, actually. But let's open it up. Let's see if it will play anything. I'll put a disc into number four. Oh, that part works. Hmm. I wonder if it's just this noise that they uh, that's causing them concern. That belt needs, probably needs to be addressed because there's a little bit of slack, or I shouldn't say slack, but there's a little bit of uh, slippage on this. So we'll do the belt on this thing, and then we'll, we'll take a look at that motor. It's opening and closing fine, it's just that I, when I put my thumb against it, I can stop it. I think it should have a little more torque. So we're going to shrink this belt a bit and see whether that gives me any more torque, and then I'll look into that motor. Now, as you can hear, as the disc has been playing out, I'm starting to get some distortion. and That may be due to the disc spindle being a little bit low. And looking down at the lens, it appears to be, it's normally you can see the lens, sitting about level with the outside of the or the surface of the the laser pickup and the lens looks to be sitting a little bit low which may be that the spindle has dropped down slightly on the spin motor and it's causing the focus to be at the lower limit of its uh, travel now generally what causes this is the actual bearing itself in the motor uh, the bottom bushing of the bearing wears and it causes the motor itself to start to drop. And usually when that happens, you'll also get some wobble in the disc, which is what we are seeing here. If I'm touching my finger up against it, it's going because the disc itself is not sitting uh, completely level. It's got a bit of a wobble to it, which will also cause focus problems. Much like we're getting here. 
And as the disc plays further out, those interruptions become, of course become worse because as the laser plays out, that error will be greater. In the middle, when the, when the laser is close to the center of the disc, the, any wobble on there is not as great, but it is accentuated as the disc moves out. You can actually see it if you look in the reflection. You can actually see the wobble in the disc as it spins. Okay, you can see it here as the lights are reflecting. The way that the lights reflecting off the disc. You can see the slight wobble. Now the disc I believe has got some printing on it so that'll affect it slightly but uh, looks like the disc is, well you can see around the edges here, you can see the slight wobble. So it could be that the, uh, the, the spindle is maybe not 100% true. It's slightly off-center. You can actually see if you look down at the very center of the spindle here you can almost see it here in the middle too very very slightly very slight wobble and that's all it takes and if the laser is if it's a little bit too low or a little bit too high it can't quite focus and uh, sometimes you got to change the spindle motor because quite often it's the spindle motor itself that's uh, causing this the motor itself the bearing is uh, going bad and it's allowing the spindle to get sloppy so here's the belt after boiling it for 15 minutes We'll put it back in and see how much more torque I have on the tray. Oh yeah, <laughs> it almost stalls out the motor now. Like before I could just touch it and it would... Now it it has had added quite a bit more torque here. So this is what I'm referring to here, the spindle assembly. Sometimes these spindle assemblies can slide down a bit on the, uh, also sometimes these springs that hold up these rubber grommets, the springs quite often get weak. When the unit is running you can normally see the top surface of the lens and you can see it uh, moving up and down as the disc spins. In this case it's running way down low in the in the well of the of the laser here, which means that it's probably running close to the bottom of its uh, travel. And then when you get a bit of a, a wobble on the disc, it can't track because it's hitting the bottom tra bottom of its travel. So it can't uh, focus. And then you end up with noise and distortion and so forth and skipping. A couple of things can happen. The motor itself, the motor shaft wears slightly and it causes the, the bearing to wear and then the, the uh, spindle drops. Other times what happens is the disc table itself gets bent or out of alignment and as you can see if I rotate the disc slowly you'll see that the disc is not spinning evenly. As you can see when I had it when I had it playing but if we lower the camera down so you can take a look right at the angle of the disc itself. As I spin the disc you see the bit of wobble there in the disc? This is what's causing the focus problem. As the disc rotates, the height of the disc is changing slightly and the focus servo is not able to keep up. So usually it's the spindle motor that causes this. It's either become bent or it's worn or it could be the disc table itself that's on here. And usually when this goes bad, ideally what we would change is we would change this whole bracket assembly here, right? Which has got the motor and everything on it. So we would change this bracket, the whole motor spindle bracket mo assembly, if I can find one. I have here a Philips CD880 single disc CD player. This thing's been, um, it's had a few people work on this thing in the past. And I generally don't like it when someone brings me a unit and uh, they've had it to a shop and the shop's gone through and they've gone and done a bunch of things like uh, you know just start shotgunning capacitors in it and start changing out DA converters and stuff blindly and uh, it doesn't work so then they bring it to me and they say well can you fix it and my answer to that is well I don't know we'll give it a shot and see whether it's fixable or not because I don't know what has been done to it and what may what damage may have been caused by somebody else that just starts changing parts on on the device so when I put the disc in 
it's had the laser changed on it and it, it wouldn't, wouldn't read so it went into a, a, a shop that I'm not going to say the name of it but I've had other products that that shop has had before and I've had to uh, rework them so on this one when I press play that's all I get it's a couple little clicks no sound counters moving so it's reading the disc but we're not getting any audio so let's uh, take a look and see if I can figure out what's wrong with this thing now when we look in the top of this CD player what you're seeing on this is probably one of the best CD players that's been made and um, look at this mess look at the mess that the last guy did on this thing oh my freaking god can you guys see what I'm talking about look at this what an absolute joke who in their right mind does that to a DAC absolutely disgusting what the hell pieces of cat5 wire to connect it down to the board because he probably effed up the board taking the old chip out <sighs> saved by the bell if you want to see an even bigger joke here's the underside of the board the person who worked on this didn't even try to unsolder the old IC. He just cut off the pins from the top side and uh, decided he was going to tack a new one down and did that mess. And did that mess. Unbelievable. What a, you know, what a nightmare that is. And to think that someone was going to try to fix something like that and send it out. First of all, these wires sticking up like this are going to radiate signals like you wouldn't believe right but um, I don't even know if I can fix this thing I don't know I don't even know if I want to fix this thing because uh, if I fix this thing I'm gonna be married to it forever and I don't know that I want to get married to uh, uh, it's I mean it's a nice CD player and the guy that owns it is an audiophile and he wants to keep this thing but I mean this is a hack job and the, you know this is what can I say you know it's just the guy butchered this thing and uh, these are real nice CD players because of the TDA 1541 DA converter on these units. These have phenomenal sound, and uh, you know they're very sought after. Any of these any of these Phillips machines that use this TDA chip, this Phillips design chip, uh, they're 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 very sought after because of the sound quality on this. It's just so good. It's like my Sony uh, CDP X 555 ES. It's the same thing. The, the sound quality off that CD player is uh, one of the best sounds you're going to ever hear off of a CD or anything. And I'll put it up against vinyl any day and it'll blow the doors off any vinyl. And I, I challenge anybody, you want to bring your vinyls over, we'll put them on my, we'll compare the CD to my uh, X555ES. You won't think your vinyl sounds so good after hearing that player. This one here is another one that would be of that caliber. The sound quality off these is so smooth. And uh, a lot of people, when they compare CDs, say, oh, I like the sound of vinyl better because my CD sounds harsh. Yeah, that's because they're listening to them on like a $50 CD player. You listen to a CD on a high-end CD player and yeah, you won't think that vinyl sounds so much better, I'll tell you that. So working on this unit, I have a feeling it probably is the digital filter that's bad. This is the digital filter, this one. And this other chip over here is the DAC, right? And the signal goes through the digital filter first before being passed over to the DAC. If I touch the bottom of the board here, we're getting some noise through the DAC. Obviously it's not playing any sound. This DAC may not be any good. Uh, this is what was put in by the other shop, and it's obvious that they uh, didn't put a new one in. They've taken one out of somewhere else. Looks that way anyway, just the way this has been botched up. But at this stage of the game, I don't even know if I want to get into this thing just because it's been buggered around with by somebody else.
and I really don't like getting into devices that other people have just screwed around with and you know I don't know what damage has been done or if any other damage has been done anything else that can be blown up on here right so that's that's basically my feelings of working on equipment that other people have been poking around with is that uh, you don't know where the damage has ended so I've got the data sheet here for example pin 28 should have 5 volts so this is according to the display it's playing so let's look at pin number 28 and I believe that's uh, where's 28 on this thing what is it? it's 14 pin right for side yeah, so pin 28 should be this guy down here and I've got 5 volts Pin 26 should be minus 5, so we go back to pin 26, it's minus 4.7, that's close enough. And pin 15, down here, should be about minus 15, which it is. So my supply voltages are okay to DAC. So let's just look at the input. This should be a digital input going in to the DAC. And it is. I'm going to change tracks. And the music starts to play. So there's an input going in. But nothing coming out of this chip. Well, from what I can see so far on this is I've got data going in. Uh, pin 3 is your multiplexed. Well, well the, the, first of all, the DAC can operate in two different modes. It can operate with separate data on pin 2 for the left data and data for the pin, or pin number 4. But the mode is selected by pin 27 and it's plus 5 volts on here. So that selects the call time mux, or so time multiplexing, and TWC which means two complement right down here. So pin three is your data um, time multiplex complemented. So that's your left and right data, which I, I see data going in on here. I see my bits clock on pin number two, and I see a system clock on pin number four. So this is for your control and timing, but I'm not getting any output from the output of the DAC. So somewhere in the DAC, it's either being muted or maybe the DAC itself is bad. That's what I'm kind of where I'm kind of going now is that this this DAC might be kind of foobar. Be interesting um, whether I can try and pull a signal out of the uh, optical or coaxial because. The digital output, I think, doesn't go through the DAC. It should come right out of the digital filter. Uh, let's try that and see whether I actually get anything out of this optical output. So this is the chip that's been bodged on the, the board here. This is this one here. This is the, what they call the digital filter. And what its job to do is it interpolates the data coming off of the disk and it looks at the CRC check codes and verifies that the data is correct and provides all the oversampling and so forth that is passed on to the DA converter. When I take the output from the digital output, I'm bypassing the DA converter. I'm taking the data coming right out of the digital filter. My decoder goes in and out of lock at 44.1 but I get no sound. Therefore I think we can rule out any problem in the digital to analog converter. The problem is going to be back either at this chip or I think this is the A chip. There's two of them that work together. I have to look up the number but I think that's the I think the 7210, that's the A chip, and this one here is the B chip. There's two of them that work together. This unit came into my shop 
it, 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 it broke all my rules as far as service goes. My shop rules are I'll repair your equipment providing that nobody else has buggered it up. I'll work on equipment that has been serviced by another technician at a, at a prior, prior service providing that the unit was working after they serviced it and it broke down again with a different fault. One of my rules, and it, it has been my rules ever since even when I was in the business, when I ran a shop, when I ran the service department at the shop that I worked at for 20 years, our company policy was we didn't take any equipment in that another shop had been into and had washed their hands of because we didn't know what the other guys had done to it. And this is exactly this. What I think happened in this unit. See, when I looked at the bottom of the board here, the solder work on the bottom of the board hadn't been heated up. It looked virgin. So that makes me think that this, this IC here is not a replacement. This IC is the original one. And then he cut the original IC out. Maybe he was going to replace it. And when he ordered an IC in off of eBay or wherever it came from, they sent him one that they had pulled. Because this one here obviously has been unsoldered properly from a board. Right? If this is the original IC that came out of here, the original pins that were on there wouldn't wouldn't still be sticking through the board, which they are. I went and looked at them and, and actually heated them up a bit. And yeah, they're just they're just pins. Somebody cut the IC off of the top side. They cut all the pins off along here to change it out. And then they've soldered this one in, which got the pins cut off. Which makes me think that this is the original IC. Maybe it's okay, maybe it's not. But I'm sure all this length of wire here, when you're when you're talking, well, some of them even look like they're ready to break off, like that one. Um, when you're talking digital signals, and you're talking timing for high-speed digital signals, you can't add this extra length. Each one of these wires is random. It's a slightly different length. You've got all these kinks. You're going to get all kinds of induction between here. So before I would even consider working on this unit, a new chip would have to be sourced because I really think that this is probably the problem is this chip on this unit. I'm going to be in touch with my with the owner of this unit and give him the bad news that before I will even consider working and even troubleshooting this any further we have to source a new chip and it has to be a new one not one that someone's pulled out of a board because if it's pulled I don't know the shape of it and I've been down that road with too many devices that I've tried to repair where I've ordered a part off eBay and it, it turned out to be it's a pulled part and it's a bad part. That's happened too many times. So if I can find an original brand new old stock, great. If he wants to spend the money on this thing, we'll proceed. But at this point, I'm going to say I'm not doing any more work on this unit because I don't know. I mean, the, the chip might be okay and I could I could end up replacing the chip only to find that it's another chip that's bad or something else. But at this point, the variables are too great that this bodged job here is what's causing the no sound issue. And I could spend hours and hours chasing down a phantom problem that's nowhere else. It's, it's actually caused by this crap. Now, I was, gonna, I, I, I was gonna tell you who the shop was that had this, but obviously for liability reasons, I'm not naming them. I'll just say that they are a shop in Vancouver that is well known. The last CD player, the one that's on the first part of this video, because this is a two-parter, because I the first one, the one that had the uh, bad motor sled assembly, went to the same shop, and they actually told them that it needed the the whole optical block needed to be replaced, and it came to me, and that is probably what needs to be done on that. Is well, it definitely needs the motor. The optical block might be okay, but it definitely needs the motor base assembly because it's wobbling. Uh, and that's why it's that's why it's not playing properly. But uh, they had th that shop had this, the same shop had that unit that had this one, and this is how the guy got it back. Now, perhaps the guy that owns this bought this used. Maybe this work was done prior, 
And uh, they took it into the shop and the guy is doing the same thing that I'm doing. He's looking at it saying, oh my God, I'm not touching this here. Let's just tell him here. Let's just tell him we changed out this chip to make it look like we did something for our estimate fee because they do charge an estimate fee. Let's give him a bag of parts. Let's say, look, we changed all these. I know that some of these caps have been changed in here in the past because if we look down the power supply over here, uh, like this, this, these aren't these aren't original. That's like that's a 85 degree cap in here, right? All the original ones, the Phillips ones, would have been nice red ones like this, and you know these ones are original. But that looks like it's been changed. That one looks like it's been changed. These ones over here have certainly been changed, and a lot of the Phillips ones use caps like that, right, in it as well, and. You can see a lot of these ones here, these are what what say that they came out of the original ones. So, uh, they, you may have changed these caps. But uh, the IC, hmm, don't know about that. But anyway, this is uh, what can happen at uh, some repair places. Some of these shops do atrocious work and my policy is if the unit comes into me and it's been to another shop, and it hasn't been repaired I really don't want to dig into it because I don't know again what the problem is and whether the problem was caused by somebody else trying to repair it and creating more faults so um, let this be a lesson to anybody if you're going into a shop um, you know do your research first and uh, this is what can come back if they don't fix it I mean this unit probably the guy I'm, I'm thinking he probably looked at the unit the customer brought it to me, he said, oh, take your time, you can keep it as long as you want, I want it fixed. Those are generally the type of customers that you really don't want, because those are going to be the type of customers that are going to pester you forever. At any little thing that happens, you're basically getting married to something. And uh, um, I'd rather not be married to a piece of electronics. I don't need to get married to electronics and have to deal with the owners of electronics that, that want to keep this really ancient equipment that's actually long past its design life working. Now, this was a very good unit, I'll admit that. And had it not been bodged up like this by somebody in the past, it probably was worth putting a new laser in it. But, um, and it might be, if, we can, if I can find the, the, the digital filter chip, and, and that's all that's wrong with it, might be worth doing but uh, that's for another video at another time if the uh, if the client wants to go down that road and wants to try and find one of these chips I'll change it out for them but uh, I'm not looking forward to that because uh, I don't know whether there's any other damage that's been done or whether it's just this but uh, certainly that's a start you, you can't do that you can't have these long wires because at digital speeds these are all going to radiate a signal and they're all going to get induced into the other wires here and that's going to cause errors and that is what this chip is doing. It's, it's trying to correct the errors and, and synchronize the data coming off the disk to pass it over to the DA converter. If your timing is off, it's not going to work. And definitely crap like that is certainly going to cause timing problems. You see when the chip is mounted on the board you'll notice the, the ground shield underneath here all the plating of the board here this is shielding the connections we'll take a look at the bottom side here now this reflow on this I did I don't know if I have a shot from before but I reflowed this just to make sure that there was no connections but these were not soldered none of these this is the chip here right none of these were soldered but here's here's the wires here these are this is the side that's soldered right down to the board and as you can see these leads all go over to the A chip so this is the A chip here that passes the signal. Now these traces, the way these traces are designed, they're all designed to be a specific length. This is why these traces here go up like this. This is to maintain length so that these are all the same length because the length of the trace affects the timing of the signals. And this is all engineered in. And the same would go for the outputs, which is on the side. These are the sides that have got all the stupid wires connected to it. These here go and carry the signal down to the input to the DA converter. So as you can see, here's the outputs because pin, I think it was pin 3 and 4 or 3 and 5, I forget. Anyway, these are the inputs here. This is the digital input. One's the bits clock. There's the bits clock and there's the, uh, let me look up that again and tell you which one is which. Yeah, pins 2 and 4 are the bits clock and the system clock. 
So here, and they're connected together because there's pin one, right? I think that's pin one. Uh, yep, that's pin one. So this is pin one. Pin two is the is is the bits clock, and it's also connected to pin four. So these have got the this has got the timing signal in. The 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 digital data comes in pin two, which is fed back over to the digital filter. So here's pin two and it comes back along here and it ends up over, I think it's on this pin over here. Anyway, these traces are all specific lengths so that the, the signals arrive at the right amount at the right time. And any error between in the timing signals can certainly cause errors in the data which would result in no data output. So I have a sneaking suspicion that this chip is the cause. It's, it, it could be this one too. It's, it's either this chip, it's either that one, or that one is the cause. As I say I think the DA converter is fine only because I have no optical or, or coaxial output which is fed from a different line. It's not fed through the same, it's not picked up off of pin number three. It's a different, it's a, so it's a, it's a parallel path but it's not, it's off the IC but it's not the same, it's not the same data feed that feeds to the DA converter. If the DA converter was the problem and there was getting no sound because the DA converter was bad, I would still expect to get output on the optical and the coaxial output on the back here, right? Because uh, that would eliminate this. This chip has got nothing to do with the optical output and the digital audio output. So, um, yeah, I think the problem is still in here. Possibly this one as well, but I'm pretty sure it's the, the digital filter is bad. And I, I have a sneaking suspicion because this chip had not been soldered. Say again, I did that. That had not been touched. I think that that original chip was cut out and put back in because the guy, maybe once he took it out, maybe that chip that's in the bag is one that he ordered and it arrived, you know, as a, as a used chip. And then at that point, maybe his boss said, you know what, um, we're not going to work on this. Put it together and get it out of here which is always a possibility right i mean that certainly happened to me when i was in the business as i'd be starting on something and i would get into something complex and uh the shop that i worked at the boss would come along after i had spent maybe an hour on something and i was really digging into a, a circuit the boss would come along and eh, get that off the bench eh, you're wasting time on that get out or he'd come along and i say oh the guy's giving me the okay i don't care he says i'd override he'd say you're not working on it Put it together, get it out of here, move on to something else. Could have, that could have been what happened. Anyway, that's why I'm not naming the shop. But uh, I've seen a few pieces that uh, have been to that shop before. Uh, that leaked Delta 70, for example, had been there. And they bodged that up, sent it out, told the owner of it that, uh, oh, don't ever bring it back. And what did I find on that? One channel was dead. And what did they do? They bridged the left and right speaker terminals together so that there was sound on both both outputs, but they were both the left channel. And then they bridged it so it was in mono. And that's how they sent the thing out, that shop. But again, not mentioning the name of the shop. Um, it might be mentioned in that video if you want to find out who they are, but uh, I'm not saying who it is here for obvious reasons. Anyway, um, thanks for watching. We may or may not see this thing again. It depends on what the owner wants to do and whether I can find a new chip because I don't trust that one. Thanks for watching.